Welcome to a video that a lot of you have been requesting and patiently waiting for and one that I've been putting off for a little while. My bad, it's just these comparisons just take so much time to create. And with that said, in this video, we're gonna be comparing two higher end 13 inch ish Ultrabooks, the MacBook Pro 13 inch mid 2019 model versus the Surface Laptop 3 13.5 inch. I have the baseline models here with Core i5 processors, eight gigabytes of RAM, and we're gonna be talking about just all the different nuances between them in regard to design, display, battery life, and performance. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, as the algorithm likes that, and will help push my content to more people. So both of these laptops feature pretty much full metal premium designs. They both feel expensive and worth the money that you're paying for them. The real differences lie, however, in aesthetic and the color options available. The MacBook Pro, as we know, comes in silver and space gray variants, whereas the Surface Laptop 3 comes in a variety of colors and also has Alcantara variants where you have this sort of like fabric material on the inside or like by the keyboard. So we have this dark black color. We have cobalt blue plus Alcantara. We have platinum plus Alcantara and just plain platinum. And as you can see, the darkest available color options here are very different. This is once again gray, and this is very dark black. To quickly talk about aesthetic here, the MacBook Pro, while it is sharp along the edges, sort of like tapers or sort of rounds out along the top and the bottom, whereas the Surface Laptop 3 is more angular, it's more geometric, which is something I'm glad about. I'm glad that Microsoft differentiated itself from the MacBook Pro and didn't just copy. And in some ways, I actually like the aesthetic better. It looks fresh and more industrial. There is also a difference in weight. The MacBook Pro is a bit heavier than then the Surface Laptop 3 coming in around three pounds, whereas the Surface Laptop 3 comes in around 2.89 pounds. But really, I cannot tell too much of a difference here. The weight distribution is about the same, especially because these laptops are around the same size. And the hinges on both these laptops are just very pleasant to use and easy to open up. And I might even say that the Surface Laptop 3s is a bit smoother than the Macs, which is really surprising. In regard to the I.O. available, you have two Thunderbolt 3 USB Type-C ports found on the baseline MacBook Pro, up to four, depending on what variant you buy. Whereas with the Surface Laptop 3 here, you have a USB Type-A port flanked by a USB Type-C port, non-Thunderbolt. You also have a headphone jack. Same thing here with this laptop, which is nice. And you also have a Surface charging port for faster charging. Although both of these laptops can charge via USB Type-C, which is pretty convenient. Next up, let's talk keyboards. This is a pretty major difference between both these devices here. We have butterfly keys with the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which Apple got rid of in the 16 inch, meaning that they kind of suck. Although the typing experience is nice, it's pretty tactile. This keyboard design is more prone to breaking if debris gets under it, whereas the one with the Surface Laptop 3 is more conventional, and it just offers a better typing experience, in my opinion. Better travel, the keys feel better. They have nice tactility and size and overall I have absolutely no complaints for this keyboard. It isn't the best I've ever felt on a laptop. I might like the MacBook Pro 16 inches keyboard better but it's really nice on this laptop. Great for typing up emails and documents and I would even go as far to say is that the typing experience with this device is about 20 to 30 percent better than that of the MacBook here. Although you do get the touch bar which I don't think is like a huge selling point but it is nice to be able to control functions with a touch screen. It's not huge but it is a unique feature to this laptop and draws many to it. And speaking of the touch bar, we have a touch ID sensor here, which allows you to unlock your laptop from a locked state. So we can demo that right here real quick. But we cannot forget the biometrics found on the Surface Laptop here. We have Windows Hello, which works very, very well. It's pretty accurate, I have to say. I think that touch ID is more quick in some scenarios, but this is very convenient as well. I like not having to touch my laptop in order to unlock it. But ultimately, I would say in regard to the biometrics, they're pretty much equivalent in regard to convenience and just quickness or accuracy. I'll also quickly mention that the laptop Laptop webcams here are pretty much the same as well and record up to 720p potato quality video. The trackpads are a bit different. The one on the MacBook Pro is a bit larger, but I gotta say, Microsoft did an excellent job with the one on here. It's glass, it's clicky, it actually clicks. There's an actual click to it versus the force touch that you get with the uh, MacBook Pro here on all four corners, albeit, but this does offer more of a tactile old school experience. Both are great, I have to say. Um, it is nicer to have a bigger one on the MacBook Pro, but I would say the one on the Surface Laptop is like 90, 95% as good. Both of these laptops have very decent speaker quality as well, although there are a couple key nuances that I want to go over, but first let's do a quick sound test.
So this is what I've picked up on. The MacBook Pro has decent mids and highs, but really nice base. You can actually feel it from the drivers here. Whereas with the Surface Laptop 3, the base is not as present. However, the mids and highs are more clear. So keep in mind what you want out of a speaker setup here. If you're going for more bass, then the MacBook Pro might suit you better. But if you want clear mids and highs, then the Surface Laptop 3 might be the better option. Next up, let's talk display here, and both of these laptops have very similarly sized displays. 13 inches here versus 13.5 inches here, um, but of course there are several nuances. Um, first up, there is a difference in aspect ratio. The MacBook Pro has a 16 by 10 display, and then the Surface Laptop 3 has a 3 by 2 display. So this is more square, slightly more so than this display. But if you were to quickly glance at both, I doubt you would notice that big of a difference. The MacBook Pro is also strictly non-touch. You can just use the trackpad to interact with Mac OS, whereas with the Surface Surface Laptop 3, you can make use of the touchscreen on here with your finger or with an additional accessory like the Surface Pen here, which is a nice feature to have if you need a fine point of input for writing or sketching or interacting with small menu items. The MacBook Pro is also higher res and packs a PPI of 227 versus 201 here with the Surface Laptop 3. Um, it is noticeably sharper in my opinion, but you have to put your eyes very close to the displays to discern that difference. The brightness I would say between these two is pretty similar as well, probably around 500-ish nits. Color is a different story here. With the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you get a more balanced color. You also get true tone right out of the box, which will adjust the color temperature of your display to fit the room. So this is more, I would say, acquainted for creative professionals and people who are like editing photos maybe. Whereas the Surface Laptop 3 does have a nice colorful display and I'm sure you could do some creative work on here with no issue. However, there are two profiles you can pick from. Um, by default, there is an sRGB one, which is more flat, noticeably flatter than that of the MacBook Pro. And then there is an enhanced profile which is very very saturated which might not be perfect for creative work. Next up let's talk battery life and this is where the MacBook Pro really does pull ahead here. You can get pretty much all day battery life or function out of this. If you're doing everyday tasks like video playback and web surfing you get a good 9-10 hours of screen on time here. Whereas with the Surface Laptop 3 I used it for the same things and it drained 35% in about two hours with a mixture of battery efficiency settings and that translates to about four to maybe even six hours of screen on time with the Surface Surface Laptop 3. So if you need more screen on time, like three, maybe even four more hours, the MacBook Pro might be the device for you, but this is still pretty decent. You're not going to like die immediately. It is going to drain quicker. Um, so I would recommend, you know, packing a battery bank with you if you want this device. But at the end of the day, if you are doing more intensive tasks with both these devices, you're going to want to plug in anyway. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about performance here. Both of these baseline laptops that I have here feature quad core i5 processors with eight gigabytes of RAM and Intel Iris Plus graphics, and they can also be configured up to 16 gigs with i7s as well. There is, however, a difference in processor architecture and generation here. We have an 8th gen Coffee Lake i5 here with the MacBook Pro, whereas we have a 10th gen Ice Lake processor with the Surface Laptop 3 here. And this does make a difference in synthetic benchmarks, which do kind of reflect everyday usage, although not perfectly. Using Geekbench 5 here, single core scores with the MacBook Pro 13 inch are 936, whereas with the Surface Laptop 3, we get 1241s. So we have about a 300 point increase, which theoretically would mean that this device would handle single core scores better. Although both these laptops run different operating systems, which are optimized differently. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Whereas with multi-core scores with the MacBook Pro, we get 4015 in comparison to 4376 with the Surface Laptop 3, theoretically meaning that this laptop could do heavier tasks a bit better than its Mac counterpart. But again, these laptops run different operating systems. Keep in mind that Apple optimizes the hell out of Mac OS to run on their hardware. So just because the Surface Laptop 3 gets higher scores with a newer gen processor and graphics doesn't mean that this will perform more poorly. Although if you're going to use like a program that is cross-platform like Premiere Pro, I would only assume that this laptop would be able to render things out a bit more quickly with its newer gen processor and newer gen Intel Iris Plus graphics. Although I will say I did do a test with Minecraft, which I know does tax both the CPU and the GPU, and it did run better on the MacBook Pro and I believe that has to do with optimization. Maybe the 10th gen chips are a little bit new and Microsoft didn't fully optimize the Java game yet for those generation of processors. So that is something to keep in mind here. Just because this has a more powerful processor doesn't mean it's going to be more powerful or better across the board. And one more thing that I wanna mention is, is that if you are considering doing video editing and you are more inclined to use Final Cut, know that this device is made to run it. If the company makes the laptop or the hardware, the operating system and the program, you know it's gonna run really well on here. 
But if you are somebody with the workflow that accommodates both operating systems here, then I would obviously weigh all the options and all the nuances that I've talked about here in order to make the best or wisest purchase decision. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that you can get more storage with the Surface Laptop 3 for cheaper, 256 for 1299 versus 128 for 1299. And lastly, you do have to keep in mind which operating system will suit you best. If you're on the fence, once again, consider everything I've said about these devices and making your purchasing decision. But if you are more inclined to one operating system or have a program that can only run on only one version, Mac or Windows, um, then obviously choose the right one for your workflow. And that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.